This is an introductory tutorial for new Blender users. I'm using version 2.63a and what we'll do in this tutorial is we'll set up a basic scene with some nice lights and a fractal terrain surface and that should really help bring your designs to life instead of just using a flat plane which is pretty common. So when this Blender first pops up we have the cube there so I'm going to click X I'm gonna, and I'm going to delete that. I'm going to hit shift A. I'm going to add a plane to the scene. Hit S and then scale it out like this. Then I'll come over here and I'll get the uh, right here materials, a new material. I'll make it like a yellowish green like this and then I'll uh, turn down the specularity of it so it's not so shiny. All right. So still, you know, it's you know, from our perspective it's kind of boring. Still you have a light in the scene, but what's the light doing? Like for instance, if I move the light like that, it's like, well, it's not doing a whole heck of a lot. So you say, all right, I'll change it to texture mode. So I'll go over here and change it to texture mode and just turn the light off. So you have a few things to take care of first. But first of all, let me get rid of the toolbar over here with the letter T, give us more space to see. I'll get rid of the timeline for the moment because I don't need it. I'll grab this piece, drag it down. And then this uh, here, I'll right click in here and I'll flip it up to the top so it's out of the way. All right. So um, first thing we're going to do is we're going to make this light really activate the scene. So what we have to do is we, there's a couple ways to do it, but we can just click, flip over to Blender game mode for the moment and click over here into the render tab. And down here you have to click the GLSL button like that. Okay. And then we'll go back into Blender render like this. And then when you go click the texture tab, now the light's active. And you can, if I just left click and grab it, I can move it up and down like that. Right, or you could just uh, you can actually right click an object. Well, let me see. I'll right click the object and move my mouse, and then I've let go and I've let go of the right button, and now it's just active. So I don't actually have to use the G key either, like that. All right, but at least this gives us some you know more dynamic lighting to the scene. In fact, I'll hit the seven key, look at it from above for the moment, and maybe I'll just duplicate that. Shift D, and I'll move a light there, and Shift D, and I'll move a light there, and Shift D, and I'll move a light there, Shift D, move a light there, Shift D, move a light there, and then I'll right click on that S, and I'll expand it out a little bit more. All right, then I middle mouse button, I've just rotated it back into view like this. All right, so now I have a bunch of different lights in the scene. Data button like this on that one. So. Well, I'll just move that there. I'll just raise this up a little bit so he's not so bright. All right, so, but still it's a flat surface, kind of boring. It's not really going to help us cast any shadows, though what we will do as well, we'll add a uh, spotlight to the scene. So I'll left click up here, Shift A, oops, Shift A, add a lamp, add a spot to the scene, and the spot allows us to cast shadows. Version 2.64 allows you to cast shadows with other lights as well, but for the moment, We'll just use this spotlight. I'll move it down like this. Just move it around. It's kind of hard to control that unless you're looking at it from above. RZ. I'll tr rotate it around like that. All right. So we have a spotlight in the scene as well. But so now let's do something with the surface. So we're going to subdivide the surface. I'll hit go into t edit mode, I gotta right click the plane, go into edit mode with the tab key, and then everything's automatically selected in this case. I'll hit W to subdivide. So I'll subdivide it once, subdivide it twice, subdivide it three times. I'll tab out, well it's still the same thing, it really doesn't do much. So I'll tab back into it. But um, in this case I'll hit W again and I'll subdivide, but also I'm gonna hit the F6 key. This is really cool key. And what it, this does, it brings up a subdivide menu that allows you to use this fractal uh, type of noise, adds fractal noise to the surface. So we'll do a couple of cuts. You'll need a pretty fast computer for this. And then you can just suddenly warp this sur surface. Let's cut it a few more. I mean, you'll really crank up the amount of faces in here. There's 4,000 faces like that. And you can see how it really starts modifying it like this. Now let's see what the smoothness does here. Mm, that might be a little bit tough. All right, well, that's good enough for the moment. And then I'll hit A, and then I'll hit Tab. And so now we have a surface with a bunch of 
nice ridges and stuff to it. So for whatever you might be using for it. So now let's see what we can do with these lights. When we bring the lights down, suddenly lights can give a whole different effect because you have the surface interferes with it. And even though they're not casting shadows, it gives you more of a, you know, like a side light effect just by placing local lights like that. And of course, if you take the uh, spotlight, which is in here, and you move him way down, we'll move him over. Move him up, and he'll be casting. I'll just scale him up with the S key, too. Maybe we have too many of these lights in here. Let's get rid of this light. Get rid of that light. And we're going to crank the brightness up on this light here. Let's see. And then you could do, you know, you could do like, uh, you could simulate, you know, like sunlight effects from the side coming across the surface. Well, I mean, that just kind of gives you an idea how a lot of times I like to start a, a basic scene. And uh, you could put a secondary light to offset your your shadows and things like that. But as artists, I'll let you guys take care of your own colors and things of that nature. I'm trying to just give you an idea how to set up the scene and make it a little simpler for you. And one other thing we'll take care of is let's uh, we'll get rid of this little guy too. Get rid of that light. And um, let's just go work over in this little region right here, All right? And I'll go back into edit mode from here, and I'm going to use a the proportional editing tools. So I'll hit A twice, make sure everything is deselected. I'm going to hit the C key for circular select. And I'll, with the wheel mouse button, I can select larger areas or not. So I'll just select this region in here, like this. And then I'll, left, I'll escape it. And now I have those areas selected. Up here is proportional editing. I'll enable proportional editing like this. Make sure it's there. And then I'm going to come back here and just grab the G, hit the G button or the G key, and then I'm just raising this surface up like this, all right? But if I was, you notice there's also a circle in there too. So if I was to crank it out like that, you can see me really changing the surface. Well, you might not be able to, so I'm just gonna really quickly add a, hang on, better tab out of that. I'll add a uh, hemisphere lamp to the scene really quick and just crank down the energy so you can see more of the whole thing like that. Suddenly we have a terrible lighting scene, don't we? <laughs> Is that spotlight? Well, I think you get the idea. All right, so basically I'm raising it up and you can change the, uh, the, the influence with that circle as you're moving it. Hit the G and just changing it there or changing it like that. So you, and it really, you might want to design a volcano that way. It's really a great way to work with it. So, well, hopefully that gives you an idea of setting up a scene. And I'll let you as artists take care of your own lightings and colors and fun stuff like that. All right? All right, well, I'll see you in the next lesson.